Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have um, a video on the frost cloths finally um, being removed. But I'm not going to do it all today because we just got back from our recent trip um, and we've been really busy. So I haven't had much time guys to do what I need to do. Check out the um, the spring flowers here on the thyme. This is lemon thyme. And I have that fig tree to finish off. And guys, a lot of vans. I've got a lot of things to do. I blew out the, um, the pergola area with a blower as soon as we came in. And it's, oh yeah, and it's raining. So because it's raining, this video is only going to be uh, an introduction to what is going to be going on. So what's coming up guys is the unwrapping of the tropical trees. And the reason for that is they haven't had any water. And I don't want to give them tap water, right? That's like last measure. I want them to get rain water. And this morning it rained so much and I lost out on all that rain. It's just, it happened just as we came in from the airport so I missed it and right now as you can see it's raining again it just started raining 10 minutes ago but we were out running errands right and so again I missed out on um, removing the the uh, frost cloths from the um, the tropicals but I just want to show you quickly what I did find as we rolled up last night I found the uh, the frost cloth on this Bowen mango had totally um, gone sideways and flipped around, but it was it was still clinging on. It hadn't flown away. I've taken it away now. It's not here. But um, what happened was these uh, stakes got twisted. Have a look. Because they're really tall, they're 2.4 meters or seven and a half feet. Look, see what happened? From the from the wind, the wind that Melbourne had the last um, 10 days. So that was just a quick removal and unwrapping. Well, it wasn't even wrapped, it was half wrapped. The net had fallen and it was just hanging out on this side. And this stake here, it's also bent at the bottom, so I can't pull it out. So, um, yeah. So what I'm going to have to do is twist it off. Twist it off. Twist it off. Because I can't get in there, guys. Oops, I just whacked the mango. Yeah, I can't get in there. So, yeah. And here I am too, guys. Check it out. Hi. We went from the Gold Coast, which is where we were, Back to Melbourne's uh, lovely grey skies and wet, but it's not cold. It's can you believe it's 22 degrees? It's 22 Celsius. The first week of um, spring. Wow. So um, the cold is the main problem in Melbourne. Not the not the rain or the clouds. That's fine. Uh, and because of the wind, we lost also a lot of the custard apples or the atemoya. They're down there on the ground, as you can see. See that one? I think I lost about 10 of those, the little ones. So, um, oh well, right? Uh, the big ones are still hanging on. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we'll get a 10. We'll get about 10, 11. 11, um, 12. We'll get 12 uh, custard apples and I, I lost 12 to the wind. So there was originally over 20 on here. Anyways, um, yeah, guys, uh, it's been bone dry in Melbourne. It only started raining as, as we got in. So that whole week we were gone, there wasn't one drop of rain. Not one drop. Unbelievable. And now that we're back, guess what? It rained the night, as I said, last night when we came in. It's raining now, and it's going to rain all next week. Damn it. I mean, we need the rain. Don't get me wrong. But um, I'm home now. 
I just wish it had rained whilst we were on, on the Gold Coast. Now, I also want to show you guys this African pride. Wow. This I just planted back in, um, I think it was March at the end of summer and it's dead. I mean, not happy at all. But thankfully, it's dead up to here. See what's going on here with the, hang on. Right, all this is dead, dead wood, but there it's alive. So, and the graft is here. Right, and that's the rootstock. So this part here is alive up to there. So we still have life in the African pride. It's just that um, it freaked out with that cold we had in July. This is July. July is the, is the nastiest month, not only in Melbourne, but in Queensland too. So uh, it looks like it'll survive. <laughs> just, <laughs> just. But it should have been wrapped because it was only six months old. Okay, so we almost lost that. The longan is okay, the baby longan. The lychee is okay, the baby lychee. Yeah, lychee and longan, not all lychees. We have some lychees that are not okay. Cold sensitive, like Erd Erdon Lee. Forget about Erdon Lee in Melbourne, unless you give it a lot of pampering. So when I say Erdon Lee, I'm talking about uncovered, unprotected. Forget it. I've lost two of them. I like to plant lychees without protection, guys. Like this lychee here, it's doing great. Um, no protection at all, and it came through winter, no problem. Remember, I lost half this tree. There was another branch coming out here, right? I lost that branch because this friggin' banana pot fell with the storms in February. This pot collapsed and took half the lychee with it. So if it's not the cold, guys, if it's not the cold and it's not the fruit flies, it's the wind. Ah, we've got 20 million problems here. Not one problem. They say Melbourne's too cold. It's too cold. Yeah, but there's a million other things that can go wrong other than just cold. So that's how I lost half the lychee tree. It wasn't from the cold. It was from that pot there collapsing onto my tree. Nothing to do with the weather. Well, nothing to do with the temperature. All right, so what else did I want to show you guys? Yeah, man, we had all that wind and I didn't lose one single banana. No one will believe it. How on earth did these bananas stay standing with 10 days of Category 2 and Category 3 cyclone weather? Yep, you heard right. Melbourne had 10 days of cyclonic weather conditions and not one banana fell in any direction. Amazing, huh? And you know why? Because of these bungee cords. See those green cords? Guys, they're your best friend for bananas. Forget about putting up um, what do you call it? Stakes or supports? You can do that as a, as a secondary backup. But uh, the bungee cord, $5 for each one, right? Or $6, I can't remember. I've got 10 of them or 20 of them. I don't remember, guys. Right? Let's say 50 to $100 to protect all my bananas from Cyclone. Great investment. Okay, so what else? Um, yeah, everything's um, flowering. These are this is the uh, the bacon avocado, and that's the shepherd. And this is the uh, cherry moya, the Dr. White or White. It's two and a half meters tall, so hopefully this will fruit for the first time in the um, coming season. I don't see any any wake up yet. It's not waking up yet, but what? It's it's held onto every single leaf. See see the. The cherry moya doesn't drop its leaves in autumn, nor in winter, nor in um, spring. So when the heck is it going to drop its leaves? Looks like um, 
closer towards summertime. And these leaves are in fantastic condition. They're not even yellow. So that's interesting. We'll see what happens. All right, so going back to these white cloths. Yeah, because we're going to get, I don't know how many hours, maybe five or six hours of rain tonight. I want to take advantage of it. So, and I'm going to pick, I'm going to go any mini, miny, mo, catch the frost cloth by the toe. Let's see who's going to be lucky to get rainwater. Definitely not this one. That's the um, Abiu. I don't even know if it's alive. I've been, I have not looked at any of these trees because I've only been back one day. And today we were out all day running errands. I haven't had any time to look at anything, guys. Right? Other than, oh, the persimmons are waking up. Right? That takes five seconds to notice. But to go under all these frost cloths takes an hour. Because there's 20 of them. Uh, we still have Mexican cream guavas. They weren't so tasty. They're very average. So it looks like it needs a lot more growth. More, a few more years to grow so it can get tasty. But it's, uh, it's shooting out new growth for the new season. My lemonade tree is loaded with um, flowers. Nice to see. I've had major problems with this lemonade. I've had it for almost 10 years, or actually 11 years. And 10 million problems. We'll talk about the lemonade another time. Um, oh yeah, this persimmon is also waking up. This is the hachia. My favorite persimmon, guys. The hachia. Look how small it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to see how the red papaya is doing. It was alive when I checked a month ago, right? Early August. So I don't know if it's still alive in um, early September. But I do know that these Kensington Pride mango seedlings, him and him over there, they're doing great. So I'm going to be unwrapping these today. So are, we, are you excited or what? All right, let's start. I wish I had done this when it wasn't raining because these are wet. And I didn't want to put them away when they're wet because they get, they get, um, what do you call it? Mold, mold mildew that green stuff and then they deteriorate yeah looks like I did a great job with the um, with the uh, clamps these clamps really paid off I lost only one frost cloth the Bowen mango at the beginning of the video that was shredded. That was, but it's, wow, it really helped the tree, man. The tree looks, did you see how good the tree looked, the Bowen? <clears throat> Thanks to this cloth. Okay, let's see if I can do this with one hand. It's two pieces. I have one cloth wrapped around it and one sitting on top like a hat. Come on, come on. That's it. There you go. Simple as that. It was a budgie job, guys. I didn't do a professional job. It was like wrap quickly. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that, guys. Can you tell I'm excited to see my, my mango tree? This has been covered since May 1st. Or thereabouts, some, sometime in May. And now it's September. Poor thing hasn't had a drop of, hasn't had a drop of water. I've, I have not watered any of these trees that are covered none of them have been watered by me all right so what do we got without any, a drop of water we got let's see is it waking up I planted these in February 2024 so what's that that's uh, seven months ago it's been in the ground for seven months and every leaf looks like it's uh, brand new in a, in a nursery. What's that? Is that scale? Oh, no, it's a, it's a friendly beetle. I'll show you a friendly beetle. There's a friendly beetle. I thought it was scale. There he is, our best friend. All right, so 
Yeah, so beautiful, right? Nice. I don't see any new growth though. Right? It's very, 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 very tiny. All right, and because of the wind, we, we, the, we're not out of the wind yet, by the way. It's meant to be windy on uh, Sunday night or Monday. So we have one more nasty windy day to go. I might cover it again after tonight's rain. So I just wanted to get rain. Rain has minerals. I want those minerals. I can just use tap water and put in, um, what do you call it? The juice, right? Sea soul. I can use sea soul with tap water, which is almost the same as, as rain water. Some might say it's better. Um, <clears throat> but to me, tap water, guys, is survival, only for survival. It's not for the tree to thrive. It's just to keep the tree alive. That's all tap water is good for. Rain water is the best by a mile. <clears throat> all right, let's, this has got a hat on it too, like a capello. Okay, there you go. Off you go. Yeah, we want the, because these mangoes are more cold hardy than the, those sooks in there, they're gonna get the first drink. Oh, did I tell you it was 22 degrees? <laughs> Hard to believe, huh? And yesterday was 20, the day we flew in. 20 degrees, and tomorrow I think will be 19. So, okay, let's do this here. Okay, one hand. Oh, yes. Looking happy. Look at all the weeds, all the grass on the bottom, though. Huh? Okay, I've got a lot of clamps. That's why it didn't move. That's why this works so well, guys. I use how many clamps? 15 clamps. There's another one. Is it another one? Yep, another one there. Clamps everywhere. Thorough. We're doing a thorough job. Okay. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Yep. So. Oops. Just hit my head on the plum tree. Nice. Again, no new growth. Oh, there's something going on, but... Well, I bet you after this rain, th these little tiny, um, whatever these are called, will, will open. Right? Yeah, this one is almost open. Almost. Yeah, so these will be opening over the next couple of days. Yeah, there's, they're like little points. But wow, check out the condition of the tree. After May... June, July, and August. Four months undercover. Perfect. And I never watered it. Never watered it. Never watered it. Look. Never watered it, guys. Not a drop. Let's have a look at the soil. I bet you it's bone dry. But mangoes don't need water. In winter. But they sure need water in summer, rain water. Look, this is a nasty weed. Do you guys know this weed? It's one of the nastiest weeds you can have. Oh boy, is he nasty. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a look. Let's see how bone dry, oh my gosh. Hang on, is there any moisture uh, at all? Any? Yes, there is. Barely. There's barely moisture. B just bare minimum. Bare minimum. Guys, that's how it kept it alive. All right, so this is also reinforced with uh, stakes for the wind. So if I forget to cover it, at least um, it won't collapse. I'm leaving all the um, frost cloth stakes in the ground. They're not going anywhere. Not till... Uh, October. I sure don't want to push those back in or pull them out in and out. And now we're going to do the red papaya. This is from Daly's. 
I could have made this video shorter by removing the uh, the frost cloth without showing you. But guys, I missed you all. Oh, we've got a tear. We have a tear. Um, so I just wanted to do a unwrapping and chat. Talk and unwrap video today. We're going to do a lot more videos over the next week. Because again, if I was to film everything, guys, it will take two to three hours. And we don't want that, right? Okay, look at all these e-wigs. See these e-wigs? They, they, they call these pincher bugs in America. Pincher bugs. We call these ear wigs. And these are nasty. They're not nasty on fruit trees, but they're nasty on vegetables. They eat all the leafy greens. All right, so let's pull it out, pull it off. See how I had that there so I wouldn't tear the cloth? It's a little trick. Anything, anything living under here or what? I went to all this trouble. Let's see if it paid off. All this trouble to cover you, dude. And what have you done for me now? What did I get in my, for my investment? Let's have a look. Yep, it's alive. Just. See, guys? That's how crappy the weather is here in, um, in Melbourne in winter. Even with this thick... This is the thickest frost cloth that money can buy. And yet... And yet, guys, look at the condition of the papaya, red papaya. Red papaya is tropical. It's not, it's not yellow papaya, which is more cold tolerant. This is the very intolerant version of yellow. Right? It's alive. Yep, there's no softness. When these go soft, you know it's the end. Soft means root rot or too dry so, there's something right so yeah and the snails love eating these these tender young leaves let's have a look yep is that a, is that a snail yep baby snail so if it's not the cold it's him it's him guys we've got him to to finish it off someone's gonna finish off the papaya See the obstacles that no one, let's see, any, anyone else? There's another one on that side, him, hang on, that one there, look, it was like twins, two of them, doing the honours. Anyway, good news, it's fully alive, there's no rot, and if I can keep the slugs off, we might have a chance for some red papaya this uh next season okay has that gone through yeah it's gone through the damn hole all right i'm gonna pause okay uncovered so i'm really really happy to see that last year i had another red papaya here i can't remember which variety but it's it, it died even with the same frost cloth with the same frost cloth it didn't make it in this spot and last winter July 2023 was um, warmer than this winter so go figure uh -huh. all right so um, but one more tree oh, the jackfruit yeah we're gonna do the jackfruit unveil the jackfruit I should be able to un uncover the uh, wax jambu actually I can uncover most of them today guys but um, and uh, the um, oh, come on. Uh, hang on. Acerola. Barbados cherry. Check out this um, rootstock, which I never protected. It's done fabulously. It's done really well. This is where I had the carabao. The carabao graft died. Right? That I got from Vu. Remember? It was like eight feet tall. And it died, it died in the middle of summer. So you don't just lose plants in uh, winter, you lose them in the middle of summer. It was 37 degrees. And what I should have done, well, so I should have protected it from the hot sun. Ah, come on. 
All right. Oh, damn, I don't know if I can get up there. That's pretty high. That's eight feet in the air up there. I'll need a ladder. But I want this jackfruit, the seedling, to get some rain. And uh, here I've got another wax jambu. Oh, check out the... Um, the... Uh, Glen. It's, it's flowering. Very early. Very, very early, guys. The first week of September. And th this is also uncovered, unprotected. No, no plastic. No frost cloth. Nothing. And it's flowering everywhere. On every nodule. Right? Um, one week out of winter. Okay. We got rid of the, the frost cloth. And the uh, clamps. And I'm going to get rid of this uh, nasturtium soon. I'm leaving it there for now. To stop the, tr the birds from um, digging out all the mulch. You know what they do? They dig out all this mulch and throw it all over the, the driveway. That's what the birds do. So this nasturtium is, a, is like an edging. Natural edging. It's, it's a pretty edging, right? Natural. They do the same with the mango here. So I keep the... the um, see what they've done here? Look. That's what they do right there. And all, that's, all those leaves go down here and into the drain. They fall into the drain. And then the water can't run. Yeah. So another problem. <laughs> so the nasturtium stops the leaves being thrown out. Okay. Now the jackfruit. Here it is. It's not eight foot, eight foot tall. But the frost cloth is eight foot up there from um, the, the, the ground, right? Because this is a, a raised um, bed. See those blue stone rocks? This is raised up. I have the jackfruit planted in a raised bed. Even with this wood, the birds still uh, empty the um, bed of leaves. They still do it, man. They're so nasty. All right, so the damage. It hasn't had a drop of water since uh, May 1st. And this is the damage. I don't know if this is cold or if it's uh, dry. Because cold and dry look the same. Cold and dry look the same, guys. So we got... Oh, there's good news. There's a new leaf coming here. That's good. Ooh, that's what I wanted to see. If there was any new growth. I'm going to leave the dead... The dead um, stick. Okay, we've got two dead sticks. This one here, which I'm going to cut right there. Right? That's one dead stick. But look at that, right next to it. We've got this guy coming. Hang on, where are you? Uh, that one. That there, it's a new leaf. Ready to unfold. So that's great news. The tree's going forwards. And there's another new leaf up there. See between those two? See that new one in the middle? There's a new leaf there also, without rain, without it being watered. Without a drop of water. Up oh, and here too. Is that a leaf? It looks like it. All right. So, and the other damage is this branch. Oop. There. So that's going to get cut right here. Right there, we're going to cut that. Is there any more? Nope, that's it. Just those. Those two. I can go snap and take it off now, but... I don't want to upset some people. I know some people say, Don't! Don't! Don't do that, dude! Not till the growing season is in full swing. In other words, um, the end of October um, and the beginning of November. That's when things start going bang, 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 bang. Well... Depends on the uh, global warming. That's what it used to be. But look, now in um, just outside of August, we just left August, right? We just left August, guys. Melbourne August, not Brisbane August. Melbourne August is ice cold, freezing, ice skating weather. And look, the mango is waking up, completely waking up. So, do you know what that means? That means I can... I can and I will remove it, but I can't. It, it won't. Um, 
it won't break with my hand because it's got it's still got liquid flowing through the dead wood so I'm gonna go and get cutters okay I got rid of that dead wood so now we have it all nice and clean that's the winter look of my jackfruit without the dead growth that in there and uh, that's uh, with being protected right it's exactly two meters in height so I will see how that does over spring and summer it, by the way the jackfruit loves a lot of rainwater not 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 tap water tap water is only to keep it alive it won't thrive it will not thrive with tap water I tested it last summer I rotated between tap water and rainwater wow what a difference with the rainwater it went boom 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 with the tap water it was like yeah huh nothing no 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 movement just I'm alive I'm just gonna stay alive for you but I'm not gonna do anything else again people say use uh, sea salt I want to get off of that stuff guys I want to get off of using products I want to um, stay and I'm, and I'm thinking of backing off from uh, all the commercial fertilizer just just returning to mulch just mulch G grass clippings straw and this chop and drop this is the way I want to go um, ahead uh, moving forward right this is the black sapote and black sapote in Victoria when I say Victoria I'm not talking about Mil Mildura I'm talking about Melbourne Geelong and uh, Bensdale right the southern part of the state these come at Christmas in Mildura Mildura is like being in Queensland they're like three months ahead of us uh, look how many there are how many black sapotes are coming so these will come in December November the earliest but December into January there's like 30 of them maybe 40 and I told myself I would remove thin out the tree because last year there was like 50 and um, I didn't thin them so I'm gonna thin out hang on sorry about that um, see how there's three here I'm gonna thin out that one so we get bigger fruit guys for size right because even though they were tasty we only got like 10 last summer guys they were this small they were like this the flavor was there but not the 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 the, the meat and there's two other little ones hang on two other little ones here that I can remove see these little ones and that little one there that little one and there's a lot of little ones so that one there is the biggest back there see how I'm ranting now the video is getting long that's a big one and that's a big one bigger bigger and this one is big too I'll show you how big the biggest one is there you go that's how big it is the biggest one there's a there's five of them this big so I'm pretty proud of this uh, eight-year-old black sapote seedling okay the pomegranates are awake everything is in full swing the April all the stone fruit has set fruit all of them the peaches the apricots the plums everyone is rocking and rolling everywhere thousands and thousands and thousands of stone fruit okay so um, that's the least of my problems stone fruit it's these sooks and this one here I almost lost to to the cold but I didn't protect it right this is a second year um, golden emperor custard apple which um, let's see died is that dead mm, kinda but it's not dead because it's very green here at the at the bottom there you go yeah so it'll make it just again just I don't understand um, just like the African pride custard apple over there the, the golden emperor was a problem but there's no problem for the um, Hillary white the Hillary white hasn't even lost any leaves 
Look, what a champion. What a champion of a custard apple. The same with the uh, Paxton Prolific. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to stop it here now because we've passed 30 minutes and I've got so much more to show you. But that'll be in the next video. I'm back at the Bowen Mango, which uh, I unwrapped last night. Uh-oh, I see the first, yay, I see the first life on the Bowen. I've had this for five years. Yay, there you go. There's the life there and there's the life up there. Yay. So the Bowen pulled through and you can see on every corner, that's from the frost cloth, all these little hairs, there's uh, life. See that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and in here, everywhere, right? So uh, this is the first winter that this tree hasn't had any damage. Why? Because I covered the top. The last four winters, I never covered the top. I only covered in a circle around. So I would lose, I would lose the top half of the tree, all this. All this was dead if you don't cover the top from frost. Yeah, so lesson learned. Cover the tops of your sooks in winter. That's the payoff. No damage, not one single damaged leaf to cold. Can you guys believe that I didn't lose, did I say that? Yeah, I didn't lose one banana rack to the cyclone. <laughs> we didn't have one cyclone, we had 10 cyclones. Look, we had 10 cyclones in the last 10 days and we didn't lose that rack that's hanging over my neighbor's fence. Is that a miracle or what? Look how it's leaning. It's leaning like that. Wow. So guys, I repeat, go to Bunnings and get these bungee cords. They're, heavy, they're called heavy duty. Don't use the regular bungee cords. No way. They won't um, cut it. I should have made a separate video on this, but you know me, I can't help it. Look, look how they're leaning over. Both these, the, him and him, these two. Oops, we just got a drop of water on the lens. Yeah, we're gonna pull that sucker down uh, any day now. And that one there. And then we have a third rack up there. And I think a fourth rack is ready to open um, somewhere. Yeah, maybe this one. And up there we have another rack resting on the uh, camellia tree. Look, that rack there. That didn't collapse either. And that one is not tied to a bungee cord. It's just laying, it's just laying on the camellia plant. The camellia, let me wipe the lens. Yeah, there it is, where is it? Where's it gone? Oh, there it is, it's in there. Wow, it's totally collapsed. It's totally collapsed. The banana plant, the stem. It's literally resting on this tree, on this bush. And back there we have another banana bunch. But that one I wrapped with a frost cloth before we left. That just opened last week. See it? And there's the bungee cord. Guys, and we have another banana rack there. And we have another banana rack in there. And we have another banana rack right in the middle there. There's the flower. See the blossom in the middle hiding? Yeah, that's a dwarf dukas. So how many was that? Seven? Seven bunches of bananas coming out of winter, guys. All right. Um, we're done here. I've got to pick up all these frost cloths and uh, dry them out. You've got to dry them out because they're all wet now dry them out before storing them uh, although it's a temporary storage because if we get frost I doubt we're gonna get any more cold by the way when I say cold I'm talking about below five seven not seven six six seven eight nine Celsius is fine for mango 
for papaya, but not for the abu. The abu is staying, not for the soursop, although I think it's dead, and not for the mm, mame sapoti. I don't know. Sapodia and um, uh, oh my gosh, canistel. They can take six, seven, eight degrees, right? And they're both, everything's alive here, except for the uh, soursop. But now I just had a look here at the canister. Hope that's not brown. Is that brown? Oh, that's a stick. Let me quickly look at the canister to see if it's still alive. If I'm wasting my time here. Huh? What's going on? Yep, it's green. All right, good. Just, just. And that's with protection, guys. Just. All right, guys. We're done. Thanks for watching and uh, check back again for the next videos. We're going to have a lot of fun. The green gauge plum is waking up. All the plums have woken up. This is the last one. And uh, there you go. There's a new plum I planted last year. The sugar plum. These are so easy. You could easily have a thousand plum trees in Melbourne without any care maintenance or a drop of water. <laughs> Nothing, 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 nothing at all. So easy. And they don't have leaf curl. That's why I got rid of the peaches and nectarines. No leaf curl on plums. The easiest stone fruit to have. Plums, especially dwarf. Dwarf plums. Dwarf anything. Look what happens if you don't get a dwarf plum. Wow. 20 feet high and 15 feet wide. I learnt my lesson, guys. Okay, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, over and out.